5 March, 10.52 p.m. Visited the Art Institute today, as I do on most Wednesdays to escape the noise and drab grayness of these months. Here is another world, one of precision and color. I visited many of my favorite installations today. My second favorite first, the Las Pleiad, based on the M45 star cluster, which is also known as the Pleiades constellation. Perspective is the integral part of all works of art, especially in painting. Art and mathematics working and building on fundamental principles to the point which they become invisible. And we, the viewers, are set free. Our minds are tricked. However, most never view a painting from the best spot to experience the entirety of the sensation of its depth. Therefore, the picture will appear uneven, distorted. But by viewing a painting from a precise point on the viewing plane, the viewer can experience a moment of literally standing inside the picture. It is the point on this viewing plane when the line that is being observed appears to vanish. Eleven March, twelve thirty eight AM. Addendum to the entry dated ten March. A dinner again last night at the Coney Island restaurant, in hopes of completing my pursuit of Marianne, waitress. She was working. 
It was a rather busy evening for a Tuesday. All the tables were full, so I sat in the corner seat at the far end of the counter, my second favorite place to sit. Per usual, I took in the evening news, had a cup of decaf coffee, and ordered a cheese Danish. This was, after all, a special night. Halfway through my Danish, saw Joseph Grisholm, childhood companion, said hello. We then engaged in a series of cliché-driven exchanges, which caused me to long for the physical turmoil of my childhood. This incited something inside me, an emotional response, and I assured Joseph that I no longer held him responsible for the time that he hit me six times in the face with a closed fist and smashed my head against the parking lot asphalt, causing my temple to swell and leaving me bloody and broken in both body and spirit. I gave him my number, told him to give me a call. He ran away. I then finally got the attention of Marianne. She asked me if I needed anything else. I asked if it was okay if I ate the Coney Island hot dog that had been left on the counter by the customer sitting next to me prior. I felt that it was a waste of food and did not believe that it was sick and wrong to eat leftovers. I told her that mathematically speaking, if one so chooses, one can eliminate waste at every level if they eliminate waste at the personal level, and I felt this was an exquisite opportunity for me to segue into the beauty and the subtle truth found in data structures. I had come to teach her. Data structures, files, documents, an array of organizational material for one to find peace and beauty in their life. I then asked for some mustard for my Coney Island hot dog. Marianne then turned toward what I assumed to be a friend of hers and made an unusual face. I have been practicing the expression and believed it looked something like this. She then muttered something like, ah, oh, chi, weirdo, then something indecipherable, and then a very recognizable, ah. She then returned with the mustard. I thanked her and told her that I was looking forward to our date. She seemed surprised. She said that she could not go out with me. She had to work. I told her that she must because I had brought the Bible, data structures, and she would be taught. She told me to leave her the fuck alone, and then she walked away. The voices continued in my head today. I was able to replicate the sound and before I could forget, record it. It sounded like this. That is all for today, more tomorrow.
one, two, three, four. Thousand pieces on the floor 